Hello everyone, welcome to class. We are studying economics. Today we will discuss what we call demand analysis. Demand. Demand. Demand analysis. In our introductory part of this subject, remember we say that economics is concerned with production, production, distribution, that is production, before distribution we mentioned consumption, production, consumption, and distribution, distribution of goods and services. That is what economics is all about. Production, consumption, and distribution of services. It is a science that helps us understand the dynamics or that play uh, as far as production and consumption distribution is concerned. And um, the reason why producers or companies or persons engage in production of goods and services is because the goods that are produced are demanded. The reason why uh, a shop would supply or would stock bread is because that bread is demanded. The reason why Mamamboga will bring uh, or stock things like vegetables or items, uh, household items, is because those items are demanded. The reason why we are providing video lectures is because these video lectures are demanded. So there is that demand which we want to study, demand analysis. So we have said that one of the main reasons why production takes place is because people are willing to buy the goods or services produced. People are willing. You cannot produce uh, goods or services which people are not willing to buy because you are talking about production of goods and services. I remember goods are items like pens, food, houses, and so on. Services, you have services like um, teaching is a service, okay? Offering medical, medical services. These are services, there are many services, insurance, insurance, banking services, and so on. The reason why we have persons or individuals coming up with all these services or all these goods is because there are people who are willing to buy them. That's we have, why we have production. Production takes place because people are willing and able to purchase goods and services that are produced. So the amount of money that people are willing to pay for these goods and services is mainly determined by demand and supply of these goods and services. So the amount of money that people are willing to buy or to pay, the amount of money that people are willing to pay, that amount that people are willing to pay is what we call price. And this price is determined by the demand and supply of goods and services. Okay, so the price of a commodity is ex exchange value, usually expressed in terms of money. The price of a commodity is its exchange value, usually expressed in terms of money. So this price is usually expressed in terms of money.
So for example, a loaf of bread may be quoted at, may be quoted or priced at say 50 shillings. Okay, so this is the amount, uh, this is what we are calling the price. The exchange value is in terms of money. And an example is 50 shillings. A pen may be quoted at 20 shillings. So that is uh, very important. So now what would be here the definition, what would be the definition of demand? How do we define demand? Demand refers to the quantity of a commodity that buyers are willing and able to buy at a given price over a given period of time. So demand refers to the quantity of a commodity buyers are willing and able to purchase at a given price, at a given price over a given period of time. So there are two things here. It is the quantity, quantity of a commodity or a service buyers are willing and able to pay at a given price over a period of time. So it's a qu quantity buyers are willing and able to pay, okay? The quantity of goods or services buyers are number one, willing and able to pay over a given period of time, a given price over a given period of time. So there are two aspects here. Number one, the buyers should be willing and the buyers should be able, willing, because um, these two must go together. There are people who could be willing to, uh, to buy, but they don't have the ability. You could be willing to buy, for example, a car, but if you don't have the money to buy a car, that does not constitute demand. But we have those who have the ability to buy a car, they have the money to buy a car, but they are not willing, they don't want to buy. So that again does not constitute demand. So if a person is willing to buy a good or a service, but he or she does not have money, then you have said there is no demand. Similarly, if one has money, but is not willing to buy a good or a service, he or she has no demand for it. And I've said, for example, most people desire to own a car, but they do not have the ability to buy it. On the other hand, one could be having the money to buy a car, but unless there is desire and willingness to buy it, then there is no demand, okay? So effective demand um, demands that there is willingness and ability. So that is effective demand. Effective demand is where buyers are willing and able at the same time to purchase a good or a service. So that is what demand is all about. So effective demand is the ability to buy a commodity supported by the willingness to buy it, okay? And um, at this point, it's also important to note that commodity refers to good or service. When we talk about the willingness of buyers to pay for a commodity, commodity, we are referring to good, a good, or a service. Another term that may be used interchangeably is a product. 
a product refers to a good or